One of the most powerful aspects of the Alpha Anywhere architecture is the ability to reuse components. Components can be embedded in other components. Uh, components can be opened up uh, in Windows uh, from, a, from other components, etc. And uh, these uh, components that are opened up in different windows or embedded in the uh, parent component are referred to as child components and the component that opened them is referred to as the parent component. So in this video we're going to talk about how you can get pointers to these child and parent uh, components so that you can execute methods on those components. So if you look at this um, simple UX component over here, you can see that we've embedded a component into it. So we have a component here called child component that has two controls uh, called um, alpha and beta. And then it also has uh, two buttons that are designed to read values from its parent. So if I run this component right now by itself, it doesn't have a parent, so when I press this button or this button, nothing happens. And we'll look at the JavaScript behind these two buttons um, a, l a little later. Um, and then if we go back to the uh, parent component here, we can see that not only does this parent component embed uh, the uh, uh, child component over here, but it also has uh, two buttons that open up the component in pop-up windows. So here we go, if we click it again. So now you can see we've actually reused that child component in three different places. We've got it physically embedded into the parent component over here, and now we've displayed it in um, pop-up windows, in these two pop-up windows. So we have three uh, distinct instances of the same child component open, and what we're going to talk about now in this video is how to how this parent component can get a pointer to each of these child components and execute methods on it and how the child components can in turn get a pointer back to the parent component and execute methods on that. So for example, right now if I um, were to now uh, go here and say set value, what I'm going to try to do here is read the value in these two controls over here and set the value of the corresponding controls in the child. So let's go ahead now and uh, press that and we can see there that we've taken the value from the parent controls over here and put them into the child controls. Now vice versa if I were to go here and type in AAA and then say BBB and then click the uh, read controls you can see now I'm reading controls from the parent. There's the AAA and there's the BBB and if I were to go here and type in say new alpha new beta and then go here and say set controls then what I'm doing is uh, the child component is updating um, values in the parent component. So let's go back now and take a look at how all this was done. So first of all let's go back into design mode and uh, we'll first we'll go to the child component and look at these two buttons over here. So if we go here and look at the uh, read controls button we can and let's open up the JavaScript. We can see that we're using a method called get parent object. So we're going to basically get the parent object for for this object. So when this object is opened, uh, we can get the parent object, and then we check to see if the parent object, if this um, variable here is true or false. Uh, if this object doesn't have a parent object, in other words, it was opened by itself. Um, then uh, this pobj uh, variable will be false and so we won't execute any of this code. But on the other hand, if this variable is true, then pobj is now a pointer to the parent and now we can just execute standard methods um, on this object. So we can do a get value and a, uh, a get value command to read the value out of those two controls. So when we run this by itself, you can see here that the uh, buttons do nothing because the parent object uh, doesn't exist. But when this component is embedded inside a, another component or open from a parent component, then these, um, this, uh, this button will be functional. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. So continuing now, let's go back to the uh, uh, master component and take a look at um, at this button that's going to read the value from the child. So the first thing I'd like to point out is that the JavaScript uh, that opened up that uh, child component over here 
Uh, you can see there we opened up this component called UX Child One. When we opened it up, we gave it an explicit alias called Child One. Now, the fact that it has an explicit alias, alias is crucial because it's the alias that allows us to get a pointer to the component. So, so just keep in mind that this uh, component here has an alias of Child One. But if we go to this button, which also opens up the exact same component in a in a window, and we look at, at the action JavaScript, we can see that this time we used an alias of child2. So the aliases have to be unique. Um, and then when we embedded the uh, component over here, we gave it an alias of embedded child1. So the, the aliases are key because that's how you get the pointer to the um, either the parent or the child object. So now let's go here and um, uh, look at this button which is going to read the va read a value from the child component so we'll go back over here and you can see that um, this time instead of using get parent object we're using get child object and the name of the alias is child1 so now this variable cobj is a pointer to the child object and then once we have this pointer we can uh, execute any of the methods uh, that this um, object, that the child object has, which obviously include get value and set value. Now, for robustness, we should really go here and say if c o b j, and then only do all of this code here if that object exists. And the reason that we would want to do that is uh, if the user were to press this button before the child window had been opened we don't want the code to start throwing errors so you can see if I press this button right now nothing happens uh, because um, well actually I didn't put the protection code in the set value button I just put it in the read value button let's go to the set value button and put in that same protection so we'll actually just go here and say if c o b j and then uh, put that into our if block. So now we can go here and safely press either the uh, read value or set value buttons before the child window has been opened and there's not a problem. But now when I open up the child window and I press set value, you can see it set the value. And then when I press, let's just go make a change there, two and two. And I say read value, you can see that we are reading the value correctly now. So now let's go here and open up, say, the second child window over there. And now if I were to go there and say set value, then it's going to be putting these two values into that control over there. So there you can see there we've just gone ahead and done this. And uh, then if I um, were to press, say, um, uh, let's go here and press this button to put these control values back over there. Then let's go here and read those control values um, um, over there and then set, um, uh, let's go there and set values from here into there. So we'll go there and say set value. So there you go ahead. You can see we went ahead and did this. So the ability to um, get pointers to the parent and the child So what we've shown in this video is how the uh, get parent object and the get child object uh, methods allow you to get pointers to the uh, embedded objects and the parent objects and execute methods on those objects and allow you a great deal of control uh, in your JavaScript code to manipulate controls and call methods of your uh, various embedded and parent components. Thanks very much for watching.